Good afternoon class. Today we will be reviewing a book called Don't Cry Big Bird. With the review of this book we will be learning a new strategy called What Does This Remind Me Of? Now um, with this strategy is it, it is expected of you to um, to view the pictures or review the pictures as well as listen to the illustration and determine um, what it reminds you of in your personal life. That way you can build connections to the text in order for it to become more memorable to yourself. All right, let's dig in. Don't Cry Big Bird by Sarah Roberts. Don't Cry Big Bird. All right, so Big Bird liked to play with his friends, but playing with them was hard because their jump ropes were too short and their hopscotches were too small. Their hide and seek places were too little. Their seesaws came down, but they never went back up. One day, Big Bird came home from the park by himself. I am too big to play with my friends, he sobbed. He was so busy crying, he didn't see his friend Snuffleupagus. Cry, Big Bird, said Snuffleupagus. You are not too big. Their games are too little. Now, in this picture, it reminds me of a time when I, as a child, I used to cry every time something went wrong. Like, if my taco broke, per se, I would start crying. My parents and my siblings, my sisters, they would never make fun of me Instead of um, making fun of or discouraging me, they would look at the situation and say, hey, you know what? Instead of one taco, you now have two. So it made me feel better and a little bit lucky to have two tacos instead of one. Let's read on. Big Bird jumped up. He stopped crying. Do you really think so, Mr. Snuffleupagus? Yes, Big Bird, I really do, says Cephalophagus. You're a very nice size, big like me. Then Big Bird had an idea. Hey, we're both big, so let's play together, said Big Bird. Snuffleupagus shook his head no. No, Big Bird. I can't play now. It's time for my nap. And Snuffleupagus went slowly down the street. It's nice to be big, Big Bird said sadly. But sometimes I wish I can make myself smaller. There's all, we all have a time when we want to make ourselves smaller, right? If so, raise your hands. Yes, I remember when I was small, especially, or younger, especially when I would get in trouble or something like this, I would do my very best to make myself as small as possible, hoping that my parents didn't see me. But do you think that worked? No, it never really worked. So it's impossible to change ourselves um, as physically, but we can do things to make our lives a little better. Let's read on and see what Big Bird did. Back at the park, Ernie and Bert were thinking, if only Big Bird were smaller, then he could play with us, said Ernie. Well, we can't make Big Bird smaller, said Bert, but maybe we can make our games bigger, like this. And he tied two jump ropes together. Grover ran to get Big Bird. We have a big surprise for you, said Grover. 
When Big Bear got to the park, Ernie and Bert were turning the big rope. Jump, Big Bird, they said. Big Bird jumped. The rope went over his head. Hooray for Big Bird, they said. took turns jumping rope. Um, then Betty Lou drew the biggest hopscotch boxes ever. Come on, Big Bird, hop, she said. Big Bird hopped, then he looked down. I did it right, he said. I didn't step on the lines. Hooray for me, said Big Bird. Bird was really happy. He, er, and Big Bird was really happy until he remembered something. I'm still too big for hide and seek, he said. Then suddenly he smiled and, hey everyone, he shouted. I don't have to hide. I can be it. I can look for you. Now this particular um, part of the story reminds me of when I was a young child, I wanted to bake cookies with my grandmother, but I was much too little to be using the hot oven. So my grandmother found ways to include me by allowing me to stir the cake batter as well as place the cookies on the cookie sheet while she was the one who put the cookies in the oven. It made me happy because I was able to participate and be a part of the cooking process. Same way how they made Big Bird, or being it, made it where Big Bird was able to still participate in the game of hide and seek. Now everybody played hide and seek and Big Bird was it. Then they played on the seesaw. Big Bird sat on one end. All of his friends sat on the other. The seesaw went up and down. You guys see this? What can we do now? asked Harry. Let's fly my new kite, said Betty Lou. She held the string and ran and ran and ran. The kite began to fly. It flew higher and higher. until it hit the top of a tree. Bump, said the kite fell down and stuck in the tree. Oh no, cried Betty Lou. I'll never get my kite back now. Big Bird ran to Betty Lou. Don't cry, he said. I think I can help. Big Bird stood on his tippy toes. He reached high up and pulled the kite down. Here, Betty Lou, said Big Bird. Your kite is as good as new. So being big isn't so bad after all. He was able to reach your kite, huh? Hooray for Big Bird, everyone cheered. Big Bird was very happy. Now let's play my favorite game, he said. What game is that, everyone asked. Big Bird smiled, giant steps. The end. All right, guys, I hope that this uh, book was able to help you um, utilize the learning strategy of what does this remind me of. Now we will take the opportunity to raise our hands so I can hear everyone share what pieces of this book reminded them of in their traditional lives. Who's up next? <laughs> 